If you've spent any time online, you've probably come across some form of get rich quick scheme. YouTubers telling you how easy it is to make $10,000 a month online, influencers promoting some new crypto they swear will 10x in value, or how you can use AI to make thousands of dollars a month doing completely nothing. And while there are some cases where that might be true, for the vast majority of people, including the creators you're watching, it isn't the case. Now, in this video, I'm going to focus on why the online finance niche is so dangerous, my personal experience with it, and at the end, I'll focus on what I believe to be a better use of your time. But to really understand what is happening in the finance industry right now and the role that you play in it, I need to bring you back in time. These were the words shouted from newspaper publisher Samuel Brennan as he ran through the streets of San Francisco holding a vial of gold, telling everyone he could that there were fortunes to be made in the Sierra Nevada River in Northern California. Word got out, and soon enough, over 300,000 people from across the country decided to put their luck to the test in pursuit of a golden fortune. This kicked off the California gold rush, and the very first person to become a millionaire from it was Samuel himself. But the funny thing is, while the vast majority of the people who went to California in pursuit of gold came back with less money than they had in the first place, Samuel became a millionaire by creating the story of unlimited gold to be found and then capitalizing on the needs of the miners, selling them picks, shovels, and pans. Which is where the saying, during a gold rush, sell shovels, comes from. It's not a lie that you can make a significant amount of money online, just as it wasn't a lie that there was gold in the Sierra Nevada River. But the people who actually made money from the gold rush were either the miners, who already had the skill, technology, and infrastructure to find and mine the gold, or the people like Samuel who sold them the dream. The exact same goes for any form of internet millionaires. They're either making their money from years of developing their skills, technology, and systems, or they're making money from selling viewers the dream of something that they've never actually done. Yes, there is going to be the exception of someone who basically got lucky and was able to make a killing doing something quickly and relatively easily, but that's all it is, the exception. During the Second World War, the military wanted to put more armor on their planes to protect the vulnerable spots, but they couldn't place armor everywhere because the planes would be too heavy to fly. So what they did was they examined all of the planes to see which areas had been hit the most, with the idea being to reinforce locations with the most bullet holes. That was the plan until Abraham Wald realized that they were looking at the planes all wrong. It was very clear that some areas of the plane had received a lot more bullets than others, but all of those planes had returned. So it wasn't about where the planes had been hit, it was about where they hadn't been hit that made them the most vulnerable. This is one of the most popular examples of the survivorship bias where we focus only on the successful stories and disregard the failures, even if there are a lot more of them. There is no doubt that the crypto rush that happened in 2022 made a ton of new millionaires, I'm sure of it, and all of those people who made millions from crypto decided to take to social media talking about how great crypto is, how much money there is to be made, and how easy it was for them. But for every one crypto millionaire, there are probably thousands of crypto losers, but the vast majority of them are never going to broadcast their experience losing money publicly, except for me, because I absolutely lost way more more money in crypto than I put in, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> I've been making content for just over a year now, and if there is anyone here that's been watching me from the very beginning, you'll know that I actually started out creating finance content. Do you want to make an extra $5,000 online next month? Today we're talking about copyright. And, it and while doing this, I rediscovered my love for making content. It didn't really feel right creating content around a side hustle that I've never actually tried. But I was taking it seriously and I was trying to find the best information out there. But I realized that all of these side hustle creators are just regurgitating information that is already online. They aren't talking from personal experience. And again, I know that some of them are, but the vast majority of them aren't. I want you to understand that creating content is a lot of work. The researching, the writing, the filming, the editing. It takes a lot of time. And if you were a 20 something who had made millions of dollars drop shipping or copywriting or whatever, you wouldn't be spending your time creating content because it would be a much better use of your time to be scaling the business that you've already created. But just like Samuel Brennan, they're making their money in the digital gold rush by selling viewers the dream of easy and quick money. They're not actually digging for the gold themselves. Which brings me back to you. If you're watching this and you've made it this far, I'm going to assume you're like me and personal finance and making money is something that interests you. And I don't have the answer on how to make a bunch of money quickly or any genius idea to give you because if I had the idea I'd use it myself <laughs> but I can tell you that the path I've chosen is obviously by making content because not only do I love video making and editing but I really do see the value in building a personal brand and the opportunities that the creator economy can provide if that isn't something that interests you think about what problems all of the people who are rushing into this space might be having maybe you master video editing and bring on creator clients or you learn how to design websites using artificial intelligence develop a skill or create a product 
that solves a problem for the thousands of people rushing into this space hoping to make money online. And you will be a lot farther ahead than the hundreds of people who give dropshipping a go after watching one YouTube video. And if you're having a hard time finding a problem to solve, you can use a website like Answer the Public. This isn't a sponsor, but I've used it a ton throughout my content journey. And you can basically input any keyword like content creation or copywriting or affiliate marketing, and you can see what people are searching for in relation to that keyword. For example, if you see a lot of people are searching for how to find copywriting clients, maybe you make a blog dedicated to that, or better yet, start teaching yourself outbound sales skills so you can be the middleman putting copywriters and their clients together. It won't happen overnight, and it probably won't be easy, but in the end, if you actually want to work for yourself and make money on the internet, focus on the skills you can provide.